Hi, it's Erica, um, Simply Craft, and welcome to another Demo Plus Demo. And today, um, it's just past Christmas, we're in the new year, and just thought I'd share with you a journal page. This is a napkin that we had on Christmas Day, and it was so lovely, I thought I'd keep it and use it in my journal. It's a nice way to remember a day have a keepsake that's actually being used rather than just become something that you stuff in a drawer. Just quickly about journaling. This is one of my art journals. It's one of my smaller ones. It's quite thin paper, but it's really uh, it's a really useful little book to have. Um, art journaling. It's really, it sounds scary because it uses the word art, but literally, it's just a playbook, something to try ideas out in. You know, there's nothing scary about it. It's just like either you're a scrapbooker. I mean, that's like a scrapbook page. Or you're a stamper and you make cards. It's just the same processes, but you're just putting them in a book. And the lovely thing is you get to keep them and you can look back at what you've done. So just to give you an idea so you don't have to feel it's a scary place I'm going to do a very quick journal page using my lovely deer napkin and I've got some old skeleton leaves these used to be really popular back in the day and now you know you can pick them up really cheaply but literally they are real leaves that just have had the fleshy part of the leaf just kind of um, they tend to rot them away it's a horrible thing but that's how they do them that's why you don't really want to do them yourself um, they're really cheap but they're nice texture and I thought I'd add them onto the page so along with that and again a lot of people write in their art journals but I'm going to show you it's not necessary if you've got a stamp or like these um, chat stickers you could put a phrase in just using those so I'm not doing any writing so there's no scariness in this one and then I'm going to use some of the Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays to add a little bit of colour because it, it might be getting too pale but I've chosen colours that have similar tones there's a like you can see a little bit of violet there so there's a little bit there and um, that peachy colour um, there's a little bit of a green just to add an extra colour to it and then there's that gold which is in there. So let's get started. First thing to do is I'm going to use one of my cheap chip brushes and I'm going to paint gesso onto the page. So just to protect the pages underneath and, and it does sort of take up some of the takes up some of the the gesso I'm just going to put these underneath as a protection you can use just ordinary copy paper if you've got it I just grabbed what I had to hand so I just tuck that under and then we're just going to get the gesso um, so just take some gesso now gesso is just like a primer for the page um, you could use acrylic paint or even something like a white emulsion if you have it, you know, whatever you've got to hand. But what the gesso does is it's, I, I personally think if you're going to use a paint, use a matte paint because what it's doing is creating um, a tooth, a surface onto the page that will enable you to put other things on top it also thickens the pages up so you don't have to glue pages together you can just add this to it and it really does work I'm going to also use it like a glue and I'm going to put my leaves into this top corner I kind of had an idea in mind that we'd have like a frame we'd have the deer here and then a frame of leaves coming down so I'll cut the excess off after I hate overlapping bits I also I'm not one for putting 3D 
projects in my art journals. I like to keep them nice and flat. Some people do. Personally, I like to be able to close the book. So I tend to just stick to quite flattish sort of uh, embellishments on my on my pages. So am I? That should maybe, I don't know. Let's have a look. Do we want a little bit? Yeah, might as well. Have a little bit coming round. I'm thinking this page will be quite plain if I don't add a little bit more. And then just with the gesso, very carefully, I'm going to kind of push it in. Because all acrylic paints are kind of glue by nature. Because the gel medium is the basis of the acrylic paint. And I use that as glue as a, a lot. So by virtue of it being in acrylic paints, it makes sense that then the paints are also glue. I, I, that makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anyone else. but And if I have any problems with them later, I've got my matte gel just to go over, just to ensure that they are well stuck down. I just don't want them to come off the page. They can be floaty in places, but as long as they're adhered and they're not going to fall off in a week's time, I'm happy. Obviously, they've gone white now, but like I said, we're adding colour afterwards. Now, I'm deliberately putting the gesso on quite roughly. I can even get this and add some texture to it because I want some texture in my page. Again, it's flat, but it doesn't have to be dead flat. So by doing this, I'm adding some texture to the page or with the gesso if your gesso is a bit thin you can add the gel mediums to it to make it thicker and then you can add real texture you know like if you stipple and such you can get some real texture going I'm keeping this bit kind of flat because that is where my napkin will be going so always in mind even though it, I have no actual uh, image of what I'm doing always in mind my focal point is going to be there and to not overdo that piece because I'm going to give myself problems later if I put too much on there so that's all done make sure my there's no uh, paint around the edges because that's why my lid doesn't open. But that's such a big pot of gesso, it gets messed up every single time. Oh, now I can't shut it up. Job done. All right, so I'm going to clear up and I'm going to dry this. Okay, so I've used my heat gun and I've just dried it off it did take quite a while because like I said I had it quite thick in places I'm not sure it's dry but we'll we'll live with it um so this napkin has four sides to it it's nothing special this is an ordinary napkin bought from a shop so it can be used so if you've got any sort of nice pattern ones problem is you never end up binning anything because they're all useful but it's quite nice because I've got them going both ways so I could choose one way or the other so that's gonna I only need one so I'm thinking along here so the trick I'll leave that there the trick is to tear not cut and I did that just to make the other bits neater but I'm gonna tear a slight edge not losing any of it but where I want the design oh that's lovely it's always good when that happens and obviously I will trim those bits after because they'll be overlapping 
then the trick is to take the other layers off because usually these are three ply this is the fun and games are oh look they all come off in one so my two plies usually you have to take one off and then the other but my two back plies yeah there we go I can show you there's two back plies they come off now you can keep these and use these for stamping so say you wanted a phrase stamp on this and then you can use that for your transfer to put onto the onto the page um, but today I'm going to use stickers so I'm going to be really quick today well she says hopefully uh, soft matte gel and a paintbrush soft paintbrush not the rough one because we need to be careful with this down it is fragile uh, you could also use matte medium uh, uh, the matte glaze but I would always use matte and not gloss just a personal preference but in a book I always find oh where am I going to put that I always find it's best to use matte when you're putting it into a book because um, I find gloss makes the pages sticky so I like matte medium for, for this quickly stick it down and trying to get it into that ridge there we go and then you want a layer on top you might get a couple of creases but it doesn't bother me but it gives a lovely finish to the page. I can be quite rough with this, but don't go in too hard or you will end up damaging the napkin. I mean, if I wanted to carry that greenery along, I could probably take some from the other bits and work up, but as I'm using paints, I uh, sprays, I might just see how I can do without it one thing that's important oh look that's just coming away there wonderful um, one thing that is important is that you don't stick your oh goodness here we go don't stick the page to the piece of whatever you've got underneath because then you're going to end up in a right mess it's, oh will it stick? no I just took the corner off there. I'll, I'll live with that. Right, it's so just making sure you're lifting it and not letting it stick to what you've got underneath. Otherwise, you're going to end up with all your pages stuck together. I'm just going to use a little bit on my leaves because I noticed they're sticking up in places. I did say it's possible that I might need to put a bit more on, but just for safety, just making sure they're well stuck down actually they seem to have done quite well it's only in places but just to make sure right and that is done now I've got to dry that again this shouldn't take so long just put my brush in water because there's nothing if you get that matte medium dried on your brush you've had it right so oops flake of that fell on it. So we're going to dry this now. Right I think we're done there. So I'm just going to get a little bit of extra paper now because I don't want too much to go underneath there because we're going to be spraying now so just a little explanation about the Lindy Stamp Gang they are um, they come dry so there's just a dry bit of powder in the bottom you fill it up with water to the fill mark I like to boil mine first and then put it in because it does say distilled water but um, 
I don't have any so I just I boil the water first let it cool down and then fill it in and then you mix it up it's really great for transport because obviously then you're not taking a you're not posting a heavy weight you're just posting the bit of powder in the bottom but it doesn't look anything it looks it, it, you think, oh, they don't look very good but then when you fill them up with water that's where the magic happens and I'm shaking them like this just they must have all of that metallic mica that's in the bottom mixed up so I'll explain the colors in a minute I'm just giving them a little mix again just to make sure they're all ready to go right like I said I've picked colors that I thought would suit the whole design and then there's a couple of ways of using them so I'm going to show you those ways okay the first way is just to simply spray them onto the page so like so um, I'm going to put some of the green on those leaves oh, if it doesn't want to perform and then there's a purpley one that thing is these are all um the, the moon shadow one so they're all it's the mica that's the color not the so you can't really see it at the moment so you have to trust me right so i've used that's a starburst in cape cod coral that's a moon shadow in moonlit mulberry that's a moon shadow in tawny turquoise and that's a moon shadow in gossamer gold the moon shadow ones all have a brown color base to them you can see i'm going to just let that tip and dribble to add some interest and i can also dab some of it off if it's heavier than i wanted But as you can see, it nicely tones in now with the colours that I have in my serviette. Ah, you can can you see that green coming through now? Hopefully you can. I'll just dry it a bit. So hopefully it's all a bit messy at the moment. When you tip it hopefully you can see that green now i know that's worked well for me and i really like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the lid and i'm going to put it on like like so just drip it on that's another way of using the the bottles you get real intense hit of the mica when you do that and also with my brush I can brush it out as well so this is you know different ways that you can use the bottles so let's get a little bit going up here trying to replicate those kind of brush strokes of the leaves I have got too big a brush but I'll live with that The only problem with this is you can't see what you've got until it's dry which does make it a little bit more tricky to be sort of knowing what you're doing but you could wipe them away After drying this I've decided that yellow tone isn't coming through so I'm going to add another one it's a flat Fabio and that's pineapple paradise I need a, just something on this side to balance out that yellow just with a oh, I'll use my fingers <laughs> I'm just sort of kind of I will take some of it off don't panic I know it's too much it's quite intense that yellow but if you can see 
it does give me that yellow that I need. And the problem is it's taking the other one off, so let's add a little bit more. Ah, that's it. Perfect. Just what I needed. So, you know, you, you can play for hours, but literally I said it was a quick journal page, so I don't want to be doing hours of work on this one. Again, with journaling, you can decide, oh, I didn't like that page, and you can come back to it, and you can do something else to it. So it's kind of up to you, really. I just want a little pop of colour, so I'm going to use... The, oops, try not to drop it. I'm going to use the Starburst in that to add a little drop of colour. Just like speckles. Not all of it though, so take some off. I mean, this is just really what it's about. It's just about having a play. Um, if anyone came in and saw me doing this, they'd think she thinks she's three years old. That's really, that is what it's about, being a kid again. But it's such a, a positive thing to be, to get your hands dirty and just have a play. So I'm going to give that all a complete dry and we'll go on to the next stage. Nope. Right, so that's done. We nearly had a disaster when the page stuck to the cloth, but we are done. So I'm just going to trim the excess off just to give me a better idea of what my page looks like now. I mean, I could leave them, but it just I just don't like messy books with bits hanging out everywhere. That's just me. I mean, obviously, this is still a little bit damp. If you were going to do any kind of pen journaling on top, I would definitely leave it um, 24 hours because that is not going to take any pen. But what it will take is the a watercolour pencil. This one is a Stabilo All, which is for paper, glass, plastic and metal. So I know it will go over the top. And if I can just find the leaves, I just thought I'd highlight the leaves with it. go around the edges of them just define them so they really stand out and then maybe um, go around my edges messily because I do love that just to frame the page and I'll use water in a minute to get that all to come to life there we go then a little bit of water and I mean a little can you see how that comes alive you can probably do it with a, an ordinary watercolour pencil as well I have don't go out specially to buy that one pencil Oop. It's not about being perfect, get your fingers in, mess it up, love that. I think the, the more into mark making I get, the more messy I get, which I notice with others as well. You tend to be less precise and perfect about things. And that was my kind of aim last year to make myself messy myself up a bit. Let's see if we can just bring that over a bit and 
blend that in there we go so I'm trying to blend those two together I've got some words to go on here so just quickly dry this piece so I can stick my words down I'm thinking at Christmas spending time with family they're the words I want to use so I want see if I've got them in the black do I want the black no I don't know let me see depends if I've got the words um no I'll use them in the white I want blessings I want family um, uh, what was the other word I wanted remember memories um, remember just to remind me that I should remember uh, remember blessings of the family remember family blessings yeah so I'm going to remember family blessings I'm not putting them on straight I'm not bothering about that but I am going to give them a little frame of pencil to highlight them and there we go there's my finished page well it's I say finished I will probably add more to it that's what I do but that's the thing about journaling it's kind of never finished and if you dislike a page you can paint over it and start again with something like this that texture painted over will probably give a really nice look but I really I'm really loving that but you see this is in my book and this is something that is a reference to me and these leaves stuck down and with the glitter over the top has worked so well I will probably use that in a proper piece of work so this to me is an experiment that I can transfer onto a onto something else so that's really art journaling that's what it is to me it's a it's a, a kind of experiment space so hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching